Hello and welcome to Unstitches. Today I have a treat for those who appreciate older machines and uh, those that are interested. Uh, it, this is a machine that a customer has brought in and she said that it was it was working. You know, she uses it. It's, it's in use as such. She uses it for, uh, I assume, mending and just general sewing jobs around the home. And so it's kind of like a... A daily machine if you know what I mean um, and she said it was working fine and then all of a sudden it wasn't so let's take a look here and see what's going on with this machine the case is in I'd say pretty good condition it could do with a a little bit of a cleanup I won't go through doing that today I'll probably just leave that up to the customer if uh, she wants to go further with that she can, but um, we'll leave that at this stage. It's uh, got the original key here, pretty ornate looking key. Yeah, it's square ended there. So we'll just unlock the case there. And let's see what we've got. We have a Jones. Now let's get in for a closer look here. Jones family CS and down here Manchester let's have a close look at the label there it says here guide bridge factory Manchester but look it's in pretty good condition I would say you know the decals are in pretty uh, tidy shape here if we have a look down on the bed of the machine there can see that they're in pretty good shape all right these decals here would be the ones that would wear out first and uh, you know they're looking in pretty good condition the reason they wear out first is because generally that's where your work is brushing across the surface of the machine we have a serial number 429406 there and can anyone spot what the problem might be. I'll give you a clue. It might be difficult to see if we have a close look in this area here. Giving it away pretty much here. But I can see a problem and it's to do with the needle. If you guessed or if you identified that the needle is in the incorrect orientation you'd be right that I would say would be a hundred percent of the problem here so that will be sorted uh, we'll get to that in a second uh, but let's also have another look here let's have a look around this end here we've got the hand wheel here hand crank machine just latch that in there and uh, the machine's turning over okay it's a little bit tight in one spot there just a bit tight when i come around but generally feels okay uh, i can see a little problem here also with the uh, with the this little mechanism here is actually sitting down on top of the release uh, lever there to release the hand wheel from uh, the drive for when you're winding the bobbin etc so that's something that needs to be sorted pretty straightforward I'll, I'll get into that in a second and uh, have a look around the back of the machine here looking very nice that is very tight that screw there I need to have a look at that English made okay Manchester England okay so yeah I don't know is there a Manchester in the USA <laughs> I'm not sure but yep Jones obviously English made okay I'm living and learning uh, so yep a couple of screws there to get the face plate off we'll have a look in behind there Let's check the slides here yep that one's sliding nicely that one is as well so you can tell that the machine's been fairly well looked after and stored correctly there's no rust or oxidization or anything like that around um, so yeah it's been well stored probably in a nice cozy house 
And anything else of note there? I don't think so. Stitch length and reverse. It's a reversible machine. If we push the lever down, I can see that the feed dogs are feeding in reverse there. Okay, so a way to tell is if you turn the machine in operating direction, you can see that the feed dogs are coming up above the plate there and then reversing towards you. So feeding the fabric towards you, which is uh, reversing. And if I flick the lever up here, you'll see that it's feeding away, which is forward there. So that's looking pretty good there. Okay, so uh, I'll come back to the needle in a second. I think first of all what I'll do is we'll go through and uh, just do a, a quick service here. Now, I'd like to sort this problem here out. This here just flips back like that and that uh, disengages the hand wheel from the machine drive there and what we can do is just relocate that but before I do so uh, this little lever here pops out you see and that disengages the drive of the machine so that if you're winding a bobbin which is just here like so your bobbin winder is running but the rest of the machine is is not so if you've got your machine threaded and you just want to quickly wind a bobbin you can disengage uh, this here and that relocates back in to a little a little slot here coming around just there flip that back in you can actually flip it back in without being in the slot and it'll just if i hold back on this it'll just pop around until the slot comes back around and it should flip into position yep just like so so i'll give it a a little bit of a brush off there that's a good way to start anyway if you don't have an air compressor uh, just a little brush off is just fine there get rid of any lint and whatnot and you know i'd be tempted to oil this little mechanism here as part of the service Get a bit of oil down there, work that back and forward, and it just pops in there. And you can see that now it's actually driving the machine. So you'll see the needle bar down here, get heading up and down, just down here, down here. Okay, and if I disengage that again, you'll see that the needle bar is no longer being driven, and uh, but the bobbin winder is here bobbin winder down here being driven here we can disengage the bobbin winder just by pulling that back that is running just beautifully there look at that hardly any friction I would get some oil down into there now you could I think just putting oil down in the gap here may not get the oil to where it needs to be just having a look at where the bearing is actually probably best off uh, just down at this intersection here of these two parts I would say if you get a bit of oil on there it will work its way down the uh, split in the two parts where they mate and onto the shaft there and act as a bearing surface that is just beautiful there look at that no noise whatsoever apart from the aircraft in the background that you can hear <laughs> lovely okay and then uh, what we can do is if we engage this just like so that's driving the machine there and then uh, what we can do is so you'd have to be careful here when you're engaging this driver uh, that you don't engage it over top of this here because it, it won't hurt anything it's just that uh, the driver won't be sitting probably down in the slot properly it'll be being held up by this here and uh, you want to have access to this little 
uh, lever here for when you're winding the bobbin. So let's just uh, pop that in there like so. And there we go. Just like that. Beautiful. Okay. And you know as part of the service, probably just uh, get a rag in here. I'm not going to go full on restoration mode or anything like that. I'm just getting rid of any dust and dirt and bits and pieces off any surfaces really. Okay, give that a wipe in there. Just nice there. Okay, and this here, basically we're just oiling moving parts like so. There's not really too much chance of over oiling the machine, although you don't really want to over oil it. It's just that it would be no problem whatsoever if you dunked this entire machine head into an oil bath and pulled it out and drain, let it drain. You know, it wouldn't hurt anything. There's no electrics, no motor to worry about. Uh, you know, it might affect the rubber there. You'd take the rubber off, right, before you dunked it in an oil bath. Not that you'd want to, but just saying. There's certainly no issue with over oiling uh, if you happen to accidentally do so. The bobbin winder there, just a bit of oil in there. I like to oil these as well. These little parts there, front and, or you know, both sides. You can always mop up any excess there. You don't want too much oil. You certainly can over oil a bobbin winder if you pour too much oil into that hole there. Uh, you'll find at speed that the oil will start to spray out, the work its way through the bearing and start to creep out to the circumference of this rubber here and contaminate the bobbin winder rubber. Not permanently contaminate it, just you know enough to make it possibly slip and you don't want oil around your bobbin winder rubber. You know, if it does happen to spray out there, uh, you'll um, be able to easily clean that off. But if I just demonstrate that, you might find that a little bit will come out now. You can see this dark ring here. Just a centrifugal force will cause that to... See that? There, like that. So the centrifugal force will cause the oil to fly out there. You see there's a little bit coming out already. Just uh, be careful of that when you're lubricating your bobbin winder. So, you know, that's probably a little bit over oiled there. Probably just a small drop into that hole would have been okay. But if you find that it is, you just give it a bit of a run. see now that there's no more oil coming out of there so that's good there disengage that and let's just work our way along with the lubrication here so we'll just uh, get some oil down into there that hole there just to make sure there's nothing under that no nope, nothing there one there, one there, it says oil here, and I would be tempted just to, if I can find my screwdriver here, just to take a look in behind here and see what we've got. Pretty sure we can get to more oil points there. See that one there. That that one there is the pivot for the take up. That one there, I'll be getting I'll be getting oil onto that surface there between the mounting screw there and the mechanism, just like that. Uh, we'll take the faceplate off as well. Let's have a wee look in behind here because. This will make it nice and easy to make sure that you get 
oil down onto the needle bar bearings, things like that. You can oil the top needle bar bearing without taking this off, just by putting oil down here on this surface here. You can see that the needle bar moves up and down just here. And I'd also oil this area here just for the presser foot bar and also the screw there as well because if these don't get screwed in and out much they can seize up a bit of oil there nice and then let's get this plate off nice and easy to service now, a lot easier than the modern machines to service <laughs> but of course the modern machines do a lot more than these don't they but you can achieve a lot with straight stitch I can make an entire shirt with straight stitch except the buttonholes which on a straight machine straight stitch machine like this you can get a, a buttonhole attachment so you could probably make an entire shirt on a straight stitch machine which I might do one day just because I can uh, there's a channel in this here which might be a bit difficult to see here uh, that the driver for the take-up mechanism here runs in so I'd be tempted actually probably uh, to grease it but you know oil if you don't have the grease just oil to get the oil inside the groove you'll be able to see it you know when you take this faceplate off it's just a bit difficult to um, show you on camera you can see the groove there, right in here. It actually, yeah, you can see it there. Okay, so just a matter of getting oil into there. Just a bit of a squirt in there. That's good like that. I've just swung the machine around slightly there. I can see the back of the take up there. I'd get a bit of oil down that mating surface there we, as I said before we're basically just oiling everything that moves here also the pivot for the foot lifter I think is a good idea to oil that at that screw there that's the pivot and even a little bit if I uh, swing the machine around and even a little bit here just on the top of this yeah, where it makes here okay that's good there and if we keep swinging the machine around we'll get to this here which has a very tight screw oh yeah that is extremely tight now this is a knurled screw see the knurling on there and I don't want to damage that so I'll get my rag and oh there we go I've got it got it there let's get some oil onto that work that back in there Got a bit of oil there on the screw threads just work it back in and out there just to get the oil down into those threads and we should be able to remove this cover here beautiful way eh? they don't make machines like this anymore and here we can see uh, the workings here so we've got our uh, this will be our feed uh, that will be our feed mechanism drive there and this is our shuttle drive mechanism here and that shuttle drive mechanism is oiled from this hole at the top here which we've already oiled there's a there's oil on there but we can just give it a little bit more there you'll see that there's no hole here to oil this section and you can probably actually see that it's quite dry pretty dry we'll get a good slurp of oil on there 
Again, you could use grease maybe on that one. Probably even grease on this one. I see no reason why you couldn't put grease on them. And the reason you'd put grease on is because it just it lasts longer, really, uh, before you have to re-lubricate it. Um, this here is your stitch length regulator here, and this little guide here runs up and down in this slot here, so that's another high wear point. Just get oil into that. Grease again would be fine, no problem at all, and just on the back of that bearing surface there, just wear it. Yeah, just that there. Okay, it's looking good there. So I think we can put that back on. Of course, if you see any lint or dust or dirt in there, you just go ahead and clean that. Okay, screw that back up. You don't need to go berserk tightening that up. There's uh, a few cobwebs and bits and pieces down in here. Give that a Give that a wee brush out there, just like that. No worries. Okay, swing it around. Just as a matter of course, let's remove the needle. Remove that needle and uh, press a foot. Why not? Get that out of the way. That throat plate screw here. Okay, and if there's going to be any dirt, compressed lint, dust, and whatnot, this is probably the prime area for it. At the back of the plate. The plate actually looks pretty good. There's no needle strikes there. It's looking pretty clean actually. Really nice. And we can just give that a, a, a nice brush out there. If I uh, would pay special attention to these slots here, you know, there's, make sure there's nothing sort of caught in these feed dog slots here. Just make sure of that because that can get compressed. The lint and whatnot can get compressed into there. Give that a, a nice brush out there. It's looking pretty good. Might as well remove the shuttle there. Just like so. Nice little shuttle there. All threaded. Ready to go. There's also an oil point here. You see a, a little felt pad here. Give that a good soaking. Let that soak in there. That lubricates the shuttle race. This surface here. This is the shuttle race here. That is a high wear surface. So that is where this surface here of the shuttle runs back and forward on this surface here. So it's a very high wear surface and you'll see there that the oil that I've put here is actually starting to seep out of this little hole here and that lubricates this uh, shuttle race area here. So that's a very important oil point. I'll be doing that quite often. Okay, so next thing is to tip the machine back and we'll have a, a little clean and uh, look around the bottom area here. Uh, just before we do that, I would say there are oil holes here. There's, it, I'm pretty sure that'll be one just here. If it's not, it doesn't really matter too much. That may not be an oil hole, this one, but let's oil it anyway. Can't do too much damage there. Just be careful too if you've got your slide back like this and you undo your little latch there to stop, you know, that, that stops the machine from tipping back there or being tipped back. You just uh, undo the latch there, position the latch there so you can tip it back. But be careful that there might um, be out and that'll stop you from, you know, tipping the machine back. So make sure that's in. 
tip the machine back and we should be able to rest it just like that hopefully I'll get you a better view there we go better view there now there's not a lot to them right there's just a few working parts under here but again go through and you know brush brush off give it a wipe down get rid of any lint and dust that you might see like so it's looking pretty clean there okay and then we need to lubricate the working parts here so I would lubricate this pivot here both ends of that pivot there and this linkage here either side both sides of this connection here also this here will be a fairly high wear point that pivot there and also up in this area here where the feed carriage connectors are just there there's another high wear point down in here that's your uh, feed dog that's what raises and lowers your feed dog as it's feeding and if I get you down close we'll see another important oil point here we're watching this part here right here you'll see there's a plunger that actually uh, goes right through to the uh, feed dog the underside of the feed dog and that's what raises and lowers the feed dog as it's feeding and it also this mechanism here slides along it as well so that's you know a potentially a quite a high wear point there see that there so we want to get oil onto the plunger like that and just give it a wee soaking around there could also probably come in from the top there and get that lubricated from the top would be quite a good idea as well and just get rid of any lint in there give it a brush off now let's see if we can get to that from the top end I'm not sure about that I'd rather the top end gets lubricated too so that sort of gravity can work it down the plunger uh, just having a wee look at where so that plunger's back here somewhere plunger's back here just overexposing there so that you might be able to see the plunger but it's pretty hard to see it's on the camera anyway it's basically it's down in here and so I, I would just you know get a good splooge of oil in there any excess oil is just going to drip down to, to the bottom there so that's just fine okay so as far as servicing is concerned uh, you know lubrication and cleaning is pretty much done there let's just get the we'll get the face plate back on here let's make sure that's clean and then we'll sort out this uh, needle now you would have seen that the needle was orientated so that the needle eye was running you know uh, so that if you threaded the machine you'd be threading the needle eye front to back which on these machines is not correct you thread these machines uh, left to right so the orientation of the needle was incorrect let's get that back on and what else oh, I might as well just put the put the shuttle back in just sit it back in its shuttle carrier there like, like that got bobbin thread there we'll get the plate back on throat plate that screw there so yeah nice and easy to service 
けて
showed you before that the needle was installed with the eye front to back like that so there's just no way that the machine would work it would the shuttle wouldn't pick the thread up off that eye because you can see and I'll install it you can see that the point of the shuttle here just here when it comes past pick, should pick the thread up off the needle here but if the threads running front to back uh, you know the the loops not going to be anywhere near uh, this this point here it's going to be completely wrong so we just need to orientate that needle correctly so that's why I suspect that she had trouble is that uh, she might have changed the needle and maybe uh, orientated it that way similar to the more modern machine that she owns as well uh, easy mistake to make right so you can see here that this is where the point of the shuttle comes through to pick up the loop and comes through like so now I can see there that this is probably not the right needle for the job because I'll try and get you closer it's about as close as I can get you unfortunately with just the size of the camera fitting in the machine here but you can see here see you can see the blade of the screwdriver just right at the top of it there is about where the needle eye is and there's quite a bit of distance between here and here this distance here so the uh, shuttle points coming in too high the loop will be coming out of the needle and around and up and you know this shuttle point might be just coming through too high and possibly miss the loop altogether so you know I'd say that this is probably the incorrect needle more than likely now needles are pretty hard to find for these machines and I suspect by the look of this needle that's actually an industrial machine needle it's got the round shank it fits fine in the uh, needle bar here so that's that's the first obstacle really is to get the needle to fit into the needle bar properly uh, so you know that's looking pretty good there I would be just about tempted to uh, shorten the needle just by grinding a piece of the shank I'll see how this goes actually we'll just see how it sews if I have any problems with it sewing and missing stitches and whatnot uh, I'll go ahead and shorten that needle but you know it probably should be shortened anyway I mean this is coming in too high above that see that's the slot there the little slot yeah we'll see how it goes and uh, we'll go from there so I'll go ahead and put the machine back together and we'll do a wee test so see what happens okay I'll just quickly thread this machine up here come through there up the take up sort of wondering whether there should be a little check spring here and maybe it's broken yeah that that could cause an issue but let's just see if it'll sew just threading the needle there left to right pick up the bobbin thread there there we go I'll pick the bobbin thread up so that's always a good start uh, okay let's just see I'll get you in close for a look in a second we're in reverse there let's go forward here we go well it's sewing it's picking up that obviously picking up the uh, loop there tensions not quite right I'll get you in close here It's sewing, so and it's not mis mis stitching. So you know that needle's probably within Kui, I would say. You know, could be shorter, and I suspect the check spring is missing as well. That's probably why the tension isn't looking as good as it could. Sorry, bumping the camera there. 
it's looking pretty good it's stitching just fine so i think i'll leave it at that and um you know the as far as the check springs concerned that's this area here as i say before there should be a little check spring possibly here and i'd have to investigate that further maybe take this back off i think i did see a little nub maybe of a spring there possibly uh, so i won't go into that in this video i'll give the machine back to my customer as it is uh, it'll be fine you know the thing is is that to sort out a check spring like that for this machine could be a bit of a faff no pun intended <laughs> it's not a faff is it it's a jones so yeah whether she'd want to go and sort of uh, spend the have me spend the extra time on that i don't know but it seems to be sewing fine at this stage so i'll leave it at that uh, nice little jones machine all up and running fully serviced all set to go back to my customer thank you very much for watching thank you as always to my patrons and we'll catch you in the next one